sugar daddy, we we uh, raised him basically because of sugar spice and everything nice, I believe, is what where it all started. And, and we got that mare because Pete had told me uh, he knew I liked Kit Kat sugar as, as a horse. And uh, and he had told me earlier in that year, she is two, Robert Rust had her. And uh, he said, hey, he said, I think this is a really good mare. You should look at her sometime. And we got to talking about it, and he told me about her. And I said, well, hey, I said, just... When you can bring her, bring her out to the, to the place. I was working for Jim Van Gilder then in Silverado, and he brought her out, and uh, it was kind of, it was kind of funny. We were working out in the, outside round pen, and, and he comes riding her down there, and she wasn't, especially at that time, she wasn't much to look at. She was kind of long and gangly, and well, and she's just plain and, sore. Yeah, and, and, you know, and he comes in there and he lopes her around three or four circles and and he says all right i'm ready whenever you are and uh and he cuts first cow and like it takes off and he just throws his hand down and kicks her in the guts and she goes and drags her butt and lays on her belly and i'm like holy moly i mean you know pete had told me she was nice but i'm but i wasn't expecting something like that so so anyway, long story short, we got her bought and and you know I had a pretty successful with her during the aged events and then won the world on her in twenty one. But I think what made that mare the the horse she was, other than like she was obviously a great athlete and could really stop, but but she was she was gritty, uh, sugar spice and everything nice really cow a great athlete could really stop but she never really wanted to be broke like she was she was opinionated very opinionated very yes. opinionated about everything though. yes like she was just opinionated and she just didn't always understand why you wanted her to yeah. do things the way you wanted her to do them right but but the thing and when you guys met in the middle yeah it was really good yeah but but the thing that made her and and, and honestly when i quit trying to you know, because, like, there was 30 days there kind of early on in their three-year-old year. I'm like, you know what, I'm going to get you broke, and, and you're going to do it this way. And after about 30 days, she was like, well, if i got to do it that way, then I'm just not going to cut. You know? <laughs> so I'm like, okay, so I'm going to go to a different, <laughs> different approach here. And, she won, uh, is what yeah, you're yeah. She won and, that battle. You know, so kind of changed my approach and <laughs> – and and she got good but but I, the, the thing about her that to me that made her special was she was like she was she was gritty i mean she would she was gritty and and all, always tried hard to hold a cow so anyway because of her we decided to breed our mare andrea who was a dual ray out of cd's masterpiece to kit kat sugar and that's how we got Sugar Daddy. We sent him and the, all our other coach to Jojo Lamont, and and he started him. And he called me pretty early on, like he he'd had him maybe a month, and he, you know, he said, "Hey, he said, I think this stud of yours is is a really nice horse. You know, he's really talented." So anyway, he rode him a couple months, and he brought him all over and spent a couple days and. I watched him work on the first day. I worked on the second day, and and he was, you know, very impressive at that point. Just you know, at that time, I and mean, you, you know, you could really tell about him. He seemed very. He was cowy, and he could really stop, and very athletic, and pretty good minded. And uh, you know, and then I didn't see him again for another probably three or four months, and he brought him back, and I think it was Zeb. Uh, I ran into a show somewhere, and he had seen him. He said, "Man, he said that. He said that stud horse of yours. He said that that horse looks really good." Sometime in the fall, he brought them all back, and he was at that point. He was, you know, you could see that he was, you know, sure had a chance of being being a good horse. You know, got him back then and, and started working him. All along training him, like even all through his three-year-old year, really, 
he was really talented. He was really smart, um, cowy, but he just pretty immature minded. He never felt like he was really bowed up. Uh, he like he'll talk, you know, like, and he doesn't like being alone, which uh, Sugar Spice and everything nice was the same way. In fact, she was so bad we'd have to hang a mirror in her stall when we'd go places just because you know she, she, she just had a yeah she well, she had a friend <laughs> and and she wasn't very friendly from around other horses so she didn't have many <laughs> any horse friends but uh but anyway in sugar days like he's he's friend like he every time he sees a horse it, i mean his attitude is kind of like, oh hey that that needs to be my friend you know i mean and, and he just talks he's he's like that and he talks but he's he's never been what I would say bowed up or even really act that study, but he's just kind of immature minded, you know, it, it's kind of like, every, every, yeah, playful. Everything was kind of a game to him and, and, uh, you know, and even I, like at the, when we started going to the, you know, uh, futurity works before the futurity, like in October and well, we took him to uh, Vegas with us. He, he was really good, but just still that, you know, just, just immature minded about some things, you know, and like people, you know, they watch and see and, you know, and comments like, you know, they'd say, well, he looks like a really talented horse, you know, and, and like everybody that saw him really liked him. But in the back of my mind, I was always worried about just, you know, I knew at some point he was going to be a really nice horse. That immaturity about him concerned me a little and, and there wasn't, to me, like there's not a whole lot you can do about that. You know, you just keep working them and take them different places. And and um, I guess by the time I ha I put on a free work in Ardmore every year, that's usually it gets over about a week before the maturity starts. By the time we left there, uh, he he was feeling. I felt like he was starting to come together. Like. He mentally, he was starting to get a little more consistent and, uh, you know, mature a little bit. And we came home and Johnny Mitchell and Phil Ralph and I worked together a couple of days. And the first day he was, you know, he was kind of, he was pretty playful again and, and not that serious. And, and then the next, the second day he was really good. And kind of from that point on, we just worked him here. I didn't show him till the last day of the futurity. And, you know, and, and he, like, he was pretty good, like, all, all the way getting ready going into that first go round. But still, like, when I showed him in the first go, like, I knew he was going to cut. I knew he's really talented. But I just didn't know. Like you never know what they're going to do anyway, but just because of his kind of immature nature, I just wasn't, you know, I wasn't real confident in like how he was going to handle all this. And so the very first cow I cut on him in the first go around starts pretty good for like two or three turns. And then like the next turn, turns, runs, it like basically runs at him into him, hits my leg. And I have to kick him really hard off to the right, go all the way to the fence. And I mean, he just buries his, his butt. We got a great picture from it. And, uh, you know, and then come out of there with that cow and I got to quit, but held it together good. And then I went and cut my second and third cow and he, uh, he settled right back in and, um, and was real actually got better. Like he, you know, like the second cow, he was he felt softer and and better and then the third cow even better and I kind of felt like the whole futurity was kind of that way just kind of every round he you know you could just feel him settling in and getting well and, and like, getting better and better and I thought the second round then he was much more cautious yes for sure like yeah. the first go round like he just runs over there and stops because he can and he can stop so big and he thinks it's really cool but you know but then the second round he was like oh wait a minute I can't like I said before, you never know at the maturity any of them when you go show them which ones are going to be show horses and which ones 
aren't. And it was, you know, the way that happened that first go round, the way that first cow got so bad, and he, and I mean, and he gritted up and went and held it, and then but stayed comfortable and and calm, and actually got better after that. I, I think that gave me a lot more confidence. You know, hey, like this horse, you know, he wants to be a show horse and. And, you know, so I think it helped me relax a little bit as far as preparing him for those next rounds and stuff. And and I think it, it was good for him, too. Like, it, you know, he grew up a lot right there in that one run, I felt like. And then, you know, second go round, I got him showed pretty good, cut some good cows. And, you know, it was a... I wouldn't uh, say they were good cows. They were well, better they, cows. Well, they were better cows. But, I mean, it was a... Comp- you didn't get any good it, cows cut yeah, until the finals. It was a more confident building run for him and and then in the semifinals you know same thing like I, I cut some pretty good cows marked 18 and a half which is what it took and and he was good but same thing like I just the cows I cut for him they were just okay and well there was never like a rhythm yeah and uh you know and I and so before the finals somebody actually said something about him you know I you know, they liked him, blah, 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 whatever, you know. And, and I said, well, you know, thank you. But I said, I kind of feel bad because, I, I, to me, I didn't feel like nobody had really seen how good a horse he was through the rounds because I just – I never cut cows really that were good enough to really show really what he could do until the finals, which is a good place to do it. But uh, – But the work here that morning – yeah, yeah. The uh, actually, I talked to Johnny Mitchell, and I had talked about this a few days prior to the the finals. He was actually talking about Jack, his son, and he showed a maturity horse this year and worked it. And you know, he said he cut two really good cows, and then he's like, "Well, I want to work one more," you know. And so he works one more, and that kind of everything starts falling apart. And and we we're talking about, you know, that's usually how it is, you know, and. Well, that morning of the finals, working Sugar Daddy was kind of the same way. We worked two pretty decent cows, and, and he was good. Uh, you know, everything was fine, and I'm like, I looked at her, and I said, I am going to work one more. And and even when I said that, I'm thinking, you probably should quit. But I didn't. I let one more in and uh, worked one more cow on him, and it was – maybe as good a cow as I've worked all year. And it's the first time, like that cow made three or four moves, and then I got to sending him out there, like it was just perfect situation. I got to send him out there to, to go s- stop it and spread him out a little bit, which honestly is the first time I'd ever asked him to do anything. And And when I did, he just, you know, he got there a little faster and stopped a little harder and got a little lower and that, you know, and everything just kind of, and I told her if, if I wouldn't have worked that cow, I don't know that I would have had the confidence to go show him like I did in the final. So it's just kind of like, you know, the whole, which is usually how it are in the past is how it's been for me when I've had a good maturity. It's just kind of like, you know, from the first go round on, everything just kind of fell in place and, you know, and it just kept getting better and better and better all the way through the show. I mean, I thought the run I had on him finals night, I mean, he was, he was as good as any horse I've ever shown at the maturity for sure. I mean, that second cow was, first cow was good. That second cow was tough and held it a long time. I don't know how long I worked that cow, but it was a long time. I'm gonna say 30 something seconds probably. And when it turned, when it finally turned away, I wasn't worried about holding it, holding it the rest of the time. But like both my turn back guys had come down to try to, you know, get that cow where it would let me let me off, and you know, so like in my head I'm thinking, well, you know, I. I I know I can hold it, but I've worked it so long, and they're down here, like, is it going to try to run out the back, or is it going to, you know, just 
get numb and take me to the wall or you know like I was more worried about because I'd worked that cow so long I felt like it was to the point where it was played out and you know I thought yeah I only had to hold it 13 seconds but I don't I wasn't worried about holding it but I was like I just felt like I was better off trying to get another cow chip than taking the chance of that cow for as long as I'd worked it playing out getting sorry and I go from marking a big score to marking a 16 17 you know just because it you know, the cow played out. I mean, I feel like I made the right decision. At the time when I quit that second cow, I felt like if if I got a third cow cut, they were gonna have to put me to the lead. And, you know, so I felt like I did the right thing. You know what, Wesley came in there last and had a good run and, you know, but still ended up second. So, so I was happy, you know, I was happy with my horse. I thought he was good. and. I felt like I got him showed as good as I could for the situation. He won 50,000 50, yeah, in the incentive. Yeah. yeah. So he, um, he's a kind horse. He's a sweet horse. He does not like to be in trouble. Like you have to be really careful. Like the other day I was brushing him to saddle him, to get him ready. And he just like took a step to look down the barn aisle and he almost stepped on my foot and I had the brush and I just kind of smacked him in the belly and you would have thought I beat him. I mean, it took me two days to make friends again. So he's super sensitive. He, um, he talks a lot, but he will talk to me. He will talk. I mean, like, it's not, it's, he just talks, which his grandmother, she talks every time you put her blankets on or off, she talks to you. I mean, his sister talks a lot. His mom talked a lot. I think that he just talks a lot, which I do too. So I don't hold that against him. He, uh, as far as to get him ready, he's really simple. He doesn't take much riding at all. And um, he, uh, the finals night, I was a little concerned because he did not like the big screen. And I think the lighting was just enough different. Of course, there's a buzz in there finals night that you cannot, you cannot duplicate anywhere, no matter how hard you try. I did not take him down there any other times, except for when he showed where I know a lot of people like, go back in non-pro finals night or something and I didn't um and I was I was a touch concerned just because he was in the first set and I got in there before there was only one other horse in there when I got in there and as the place filled and as the buzz started and I think they had the screen louder than normal and there was like a truck commercial and it was kind of loud and he and he looked behind him he didn't really like it behind him and I was a touch concerned and then they brought in his cows. And so I walked him up there, uh, kind of to like the corner of the judge's stand. And he, and he looked around the corner and as soon as he saw the cows, like his whole body just melted. And I was like, we're golden, you know? I, I mean, at that point I knew that as long, like as silly as he might be or weirded out back here, like as long as he got soft when he saw cows, I knew we were okay. I mean, he's happy all the time. He does, like I said, he doesn't take much riding. And, uh, uh, I mean, he's, he's fun. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing about him. Like, he's just, he's just playful yeah. all the time, you know. But, but he's got, since we started showing him, he's gotten to where, like, it's like he knows the difference. It's like, okay, it's time to go to work. And he puts his game face on. And but, but you have said that about Kit Kat Sugars from the beginning. Like, I remember long before him, when, like, when we had Mercy and Cookie and some of those other Kit Kats, you, I remember you using the analogy, you said that it's like when you coach little kids in football, because of course Matt's son played football and baseball and all those sports as a little kid, and you said some of the kids on the field, you know, in a, on football field are thinking, throw me the ball, throw me the ball, I want the ball, I want to run the ball, and then there's a bunch of the kids going, oh gosh, I hope I don't get the ball, I'm just out here to run up and down the field, and I hope I never get the ball, and you always, and you said that's why you liked Kit Kat yeah. Sugars, is because they want the ball, yeah. and, um, and you know, and that's, that's him, it's like, he thinks life's a big party, but when, but when you throw him the ball, you know, he's on your side, and, and that was sugar spice, everything nice. She was that way. She was more opinionated than he was, than he was, or than yeah, he is. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, but um. And it didn't bother her getting in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> but she um, but she was the same way. When it got tough, she was on your side. 
Well, and I think the thing to me about the Kit Kat sugars that that I like about them is, especially in which I mean, there's a lot of great studs out there these days, and you know that have had a lot of really nice horses. But to me, it and maybe it's just been the ones I've had. I don't know, but but the one the Kit Kat sugars I've had, what I like about them, they, they all stop. They've all been athletic, but the, the thing I like most about them is they really grab hold of a cow. Like they're, they're cowy, you know, they're not just, not just cowy and do what a cow does, but they really grab hold of a cow. Of all the other studs out there right now, I, I, I haven't really felt that, Consistent. you know, consistently out of, out of any of the others and you know which i've had some others that are really nice horses but that you know the way they grab hold of a cow to me is 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 what i think probably i like best about them most of the ones i've had like they're they're pretty fast and have pretty good motors and you know and and but i think that's what helps make them you know, the athletes they are and, and, the, and the horses they become. And I've kind of always gotten along with horses like that pretty good anyway. The ones that are a little like dual rays, I've always got along really good with dual rays. And, and I've felt the same way about, about those horses. Like they're typically hot. Zach's too. A little bit tough. Yeah, Zach's too. Yeah. But they're athletic and they're cally. And if you can kind of get through the rough spots, they typically make really good horses. They're on your team. Yeah. Like that's whenever, you know, we have like now we have what, 10 to three year olds. And I mean, and it's funny how you can tell by going through and watching them and riding them, you know, which ones are on your team and which ones aren't. And in the end, when you go drop your hand and kick on them for finals night to try to get the best check you can, they have got to be on your team. And there's, I know there's a lot of people that, can train a horse to where the horse is doing what they want them to that doesn't always necessarily mean the horse is on their team and at some point that shows up and and to me like they like sugar daddy sugar spice everything nice even the brother that scott amos won the yeah the intermediate maturity on i believe this year that was sugar spice everything nice's full brother i mean they're they're on your side and when you go cut a tough cow, like they're going to help you try to hold it. Well, that's the thing, going back to Sugar Daddy a little bit about him, you know, even though he was, and to me, he still is kind of immature minded about, about yeah. a lot of stuff, but, sure. but I don't feel it when I go show him, he always was there to help. Like any, like, I don't think I've ever had a fight with him at all. Like anything I asked you him to do twice in one day, two times yeah. this whole three year old year. Uh, you know, anything I've asked him to do, he's all it, it's always like, okay, like like, you know, how can I help you do this? Like his his attitude, like he's all he's I felt like he's always been on my side, always tried to help and do what what I've asked him to do. And I think that's what probably what makes him special is he just he really does have that have that attitude and i feel like he's he's also one of those horses that like i think when you go to a show he's kind of like oh well everybody's here to see me you know like he like he kind of has that attitude like he's kind of like he likes to show off and he's he's kind of one of those kind of kind of horses and but but i think that's one of the things about him that makes him a, a really good horse is he's just you know through the whole training process and everything even with him being kind of immature he's his he's always been on your side he's always trying to trying to please and you know accept what you're asking him to do and do it the best he can and you know sometimes he's like all right it might take me a minute to figure it out but i you know but he's always he's always been you know, I felt like giving full effort to to do whatever it is I ask him to do. And I think that's what 
when I, like, especially that first go round when I showed him, you know, to handle that first cow the way he did and, and still stay comfortable. You know, I, I think it's, I think that's part of him that, that makes him special. He's just, you know, he just feel like he trusts, he trusts me and, and, uh, and he's, you know, just willingness to please and do whatever it is to, you know, to help the kit catchers I've had. It's not just, you know, cow moves, they move. It's, you know, they're it, cow moves and they're trying to figure out what the next, you know, what's going to happen going? next. And, you know, they're always kind of thinking forward a little bit. And those horses that are like that, if they're athletic enough, they're usually hard to beat. And, and I would have to say, like, Sugar Daddy for a stud, he is the sweetest horse to the point where we sold Andrea earlier this year, and um, she went to um, a family in California, and they have four little girls, and I don't know how old the oldest one is, but like probably 10, 12-ish, and then down from there. And they flew in to watch him show at the Futurity, and they were there, I guess, both the first two rounds, mm -hmm. and then they flew back in for the semis and the finals. And uh, the four girls, they would come back there to the stall. And he's, like, loose in his stall. And they're in there, cr you know, crawling all over him. And finally, one one of the days, they wanted to take a picture. And they lead him out of his stall. I mean, like, I just, he had his halter on. I think I had given him a bath or something. And so they lead him out of the stall and down the barn alley and line up and take a picture. And it's like, how many three-year-old studs do you trust around four little bitty girls, you know? And, I mean... And so, which is why he's still a stallion, you know, I mean, like Matt and I don't really want to own a stud, but, um, but he is a stud because he's beautiful and he's athletic and he's great minded and there was never a reason to geld him. And so, you know, we thought, um, you know, he is a Kit Kat sugar and is bred a little differently than a lot of the popular horses that are studs these days and so we thought that there was never really a, a reason to geld him and and but for sure one of the reasons that he is still a stallion is because how kind he is you know he he truly truly is a is a sweet horse well and I and I think I'd like to add this a lot of people his mother Andrea like I said she she was tough but she was a really good horse. Um, I made the finals on her maturity. I think I made the finals everywhere I went until the BI, and I marked like 18 and a half, I think, the first go. And the second go round, like, she's just terrible. She takes the bit from me on the cut and, and was just terrible. Well, so kind of long story short, we, after – several other things we eventually find out she's had two broken vertebrae in her back yeah and charlie we came home from the bi and i told charlie if you can in our vet i said something's not right and he flexes her off and she's not lame so we're like he's like maybe she's just in a bad mood you know I mean, and we, we really couldn't come up with it and we kind of went a few weeks that but she just wouldn't get better but she wasn't lame but she was just kind of mad and um, finally, Charlie said, bring her to the clinic and leave her. And, and we'll, you know, let me spend some real time trying to figure this out. And uh, finally, he called me and he said, he said, I don't know if I'm impressed at how tough she is or scared of how tough she is. And he said, she has two broken vertebrae in her back. And, um, and then, and so that was the end. And yeah. so, so she, she never got shown again. That was, that was the BI or four-year-old year. And, um, and so... You know, and that's where, unfortunately, she didn't get to go have a big career, you know, like she should have for her ability. Yeah. But um, but we just figured she must have got cast in her stall or something at the BI. Because, I mean, I knew it that she was great the first go round. And the very next day, she was like mouth open in her bit and just not. She was just mad, you know, and come to find out she was in pain. But no way to know that, you know. And even as a producer, like, she's just now, <clears throat> like, yeah, showing what, you know, the kind of babies I think she's going to have. Like, uh, we have a five-year-old hottish mare out of her. She is a, she's a, I think, a big-time horse. Uh, 
and now sugar daddy and we've got a really good three-year-old uh pulling hot out of her too you know so i mean it's kind of like you know so his you know it's not like his mother doesn't have the black type of say you know like sweet abra or you know some of those but but having had her trained or knew what kind of horse she was and and knowing what her babies are like you know is and the fact that he was so easy as a stud and pretty and I felt like a really good horse. I mean, that's why we've left him a stud. I mean, really, like she said, I mean, we never have had any real intention of being in the stud business, but I guess we are now. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> but, but we took him to Abilene. He was really good there. So I feel like he's going to have a really good show career going forward, and we'll see what happens. <laughs>